always know they be there watching time go Planning moves, stay solid to this cheat code Get your money, make it big, fuck being broke Get your money, make it big, fuck being broke Live slowly, be there watching time go Make it moves, stay solid to this cheat code Get your money, make it big, fuck being broke Get your money, make it big, fuck being broke This is how it is, the mission's Benjamin's And fuck the drama and the bullshit, we ain't little kids My circle's small, but my writer's heart, they never quit Get your money, keep it things it's all extreme shit Never switch like the real ones that die for this It's fucked up, but this is truly how it is I hope you're ready if you're picking this life full of sin No turning back, I'll represent my vital to the end Fuck the fakes and the snakes and everyone that hates I'm not phased, I won't break, bitch, I'll never change You are not watching M.O.D. Entertainment What's good, G-Life? This right here is Killer Cali, California California being home to its beautiful weather it's sandy beaches, the high life, Hollywood Walk of Fame, and all of that. Uh, but another thing that California is very known for, it's its gangs. It's gang-banging capital. All of California is literally just surrounded by nothing but neighborhoods uh, from beginning to end. You know, whether you're talking about northern, you know, northern California where you have all the Norteños and how they have everything on lockdown, you know, throughout the whole San Francisco area, Oakland, um, and, and all of those areas throughout that side. And then when you go to Southern California, you know, everything from, you know, the Antelope Valley, that's the San Fernando, the San Gabriel Valley, um, Los Angeles, you know. And right here, you know, it being itself home to a lot of neighborhoods, you know, you have the Cribs, who is obviously, you know, a large set in itself, uh, you know, who rule with a dominant uh, presence as well. Also, you have the Bloods, you know, the, the oppositions, obviously, you know. And they themselves are a large group in itself, too, that handle business. And obviously, the essays, the homeboys, you already know how the Southerners do. It goes down right here. But if there's one thing that people um, often ask me and um, people often forget is, is there Hispanic gangs that exist within Southern California that are not Southerners? And yes, actually, there is. Um, and they are not Norteño neighborhoods or they're not like Fresno Bulldogs or, or you know, or none of those sets. They're Hispanic gangs that, that ride neither with Northerners or, or with Southerners. They're just their own thing. They're their own gang, um, you know, separate from the rest. Um, that's just how they program. That's just their get down. You know, they're Hispanics, uh, but they just, you know, they wanted to do their own thing and, and you know, have their own program. And right here, we'll be talking and breaking down uh, some of these neighborhoods that are on the list. Now, not necessarily all these barrios are green lighters. You, you get what I mean? Or at one point, they did have the green light. Now, I am not going to be adding Maravillas to this list because although Maravillas... Because even though at one point they did have the green light and you, you know, they don't write the one three, uh, they do program with homies inside. So they do function with us in there and, you know... You, you know, they, they do roll with us in there. I'm not going to get into the whole details of how all of that works, obviously, because those are conversations that I can't be discussing about. You know, I just have my rules that I got to follow. Um, so however they fix themselves, however they fix themselves, like I have said before. So I won't be adding them onto the list because, you know, obviously they still program with us compared to these other gangs that I'm going to be speaking about. Um, they don't program with us. Yeah, it gets a little bit complex, you know, without diving into the whole prison lore to of it uh, of it. But just to give you uh, uh, um, an idea of who these neighborhoods are and uh, where they're located at. And with no further ado, let's get into it. And now, we'll be starting off with the neighborhood that set this video in motion, the one that had everyone asking this question and the idea for the video, you know, of all these neighborhoods that are non-Southern neighborhoods within Southern California. Now, for this one, we actually need to head down to the area that is known as Nella to the portion of El Sereno. Obviously, El Sereno being home to, you know, one of the most notorious neighborhoods, you know, within that area, which is El Sereno Rifa. But... Even though it's notorious, it is not the only neighborhood within the area of El Sereno. There is another neighborhood that's located right there. And it is one of these neighborhoods on the list, you know. One of these neighborhoods that are considered green lighters that, you know, don't program with homies that are non-Sureño neighborhood. Uh, which is the Barrio Lowell Street. Barrio Lowell Street is a neighborhood that you can find right there uh, close to the El Sereno Arroya Playground. Uh, on Concord Avenue, obviously, you know, by, you know, you make our, your way up um, Alhambra Avenue uh, to Lowell, you know, and Lowell Street's neighborhood is everything that's, you know, consists from like Lowell, uh, Allen Street, um, Norwich, uh, Templeton, um, all the way to um, 
um, popular boulevard is where you're able to find the Lowell Streeters, you know, that, that was their turf. And Lowell used to be a clica off of the El Serreno Rifa. Obviously, El Serreno being the more larger neighborhood right there. Uh, very large, old school barrio. You know, they, they with the business, homie. You know, that gang does not play. And Lowell Street was a clica, an up and, cl an up and coming click of theirs, right? But within, you know, in-house beef and, you know, different ideas and points of views of how the neighborhood should, should pretty much run itself. The Lowell Streeters broke off, you know, into their own separate sub gang. So the Lowell Streeters became their own neighborhood. And with a bunch of events, you know, that occurred and, and shootings and deaths and stuff like that, uh, it ended the Lowell Streeters up on the green light list, obviously, because they didn't want to pay, uh, you know, the fee and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't dive in too much into the lore of all of that, you know, without getting too deep into like prison politics, which is something that I don't speak on right here. Uh, so we'll just say that, you know, they just had their different, you know, ideas of how they wanted to run their own neighborhood. You know, so they wanted to have their own program. So with that, you know, came the consequences of ended up being, you know, green lighted. Um, but the Lowell Street neighborhood was never a large neighborhood, obviously, because they were just a sub click of the El Serreno gang. Uh, so they were a little bit more smaller. Uh, but nonetheless, they were small, but they had homies that had heart. You know what I mean? They had homies that held it down for theirs, uh, even though they now beef it with like all the other neighborhoods. Uh, but it was kind of like the Maravilla situation where, where I was saying that just because they're green lighted doesn't mean that all the neighborhoods are going to come down on them and stuff like that. It's only like, if they were to hit them up or bump into them, then it would be on and cracking. But it's it's not something that they're going to take the time to go out of their way to do uh, unless it's enforced. Um, you get what I'm saying? So now w while the gangs around the area of theirs, you know, are coming down on them, which is still a lot of neighborhoods, you know, to begin with, because in just in Nella, you have more than like 25 or 26 Sureño neighbors just just in that little portion of Nella. You get what I mean? So they already, off the bat, that's already a gang of enemies to have, you know? And it doesn't help that if they get busted, now they even have even more enemies to worry about. So it's not an easy task. It is tough. Uh, you know, being on the green light list is, is, is not an easy task. Um, you know, several neighborhoods have ended up there, you know, and since then, you know, got it lifted off of them. But the Lowell Shooters are just a neighborhood that just, you know, they committed a... Uh, you know, one of these acts that they don't forgive. So, you know, forever then, Lowell Streeters have been just greenlighted. But, hey, they held her down. They embraced it. Uh, you know, they, they rolled with it. And they handled theirs. You know, they had heart, man. They, and pff, although they were never a large neighborhood, nonetheless, they still they still got to a decent size. And they still continue to represent for the Lowell Streeters uh, right there. And Lowell is a neighborhood that uses, uh, like, the 12... Obviously, you know what I mean? Uh, so they're not like one threes or, or any, you know, anything like that. Uh, they use just a number that represents like the 12th letter and, you know, and etc. cetera. Uh, but that is the reason why, you know, they use that number and why they roll how they roll and continue to still represent theirs for the Lowell Streeters right there, holding it down in El Serreno. Now, to find the next neighborhood on the list... When we're talking about non-southern neighborhoods within Southern California, we will have to make our way down to the area that is known as Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights is the area, you know, that is very notorious, home to many neighborhoods that people recognize, like White Fence, like Primera Flats, like V&E, Evergreen, and neighborhoods like that. It is also home to one of these neighborhoods that are non-Sureños, that are green lighters, uh, that claim, you know, tax-free and green light and, and all of that. They use the color green and embrace themselves as that way, uh, which is the Barrio Opo Street Locos. Barrio Opo Street Locos is a neighborhood that's located right here. Their territory is everything from Grande Vista to 8th all the way to um, to where the freeway's at on Beswick and then back to um, Esperanza Street. So everything that's, you know, uh, Spans, um, everything that's uh, Concord, uh, everything that's Lorena Street, um, and everything that's, you know, Garnet and, and all of that. You know, which is a pretty decent sized portion of, of, of territory. Um, and that is the reason why this neighborhood got to be the size that it got to be. Because although Lowell Street is a little bit more of a smaller neighborhood, uh, Opal Street managed to, you know, inflate its numbers. Because I was told that the Opal Street neighborhood was more than 80 members. And, you know, being a green lighted neighborhood, being in, you know, the area that is referred to as East LA, even though it's Boyle Heights, uh, you know, surrounded by so many neighborhoods where, you know, one of the gangbanging capitals, you know, 
hot zones right there, uh, the motherlands, and yet they managed to to maintain themselves till this day, uh, being you know right there. Um, now the Vado Opal Street uses the number fifteen, uh, obviously because you know it's, it's going to be a common theme right here. Obviously, you know the fifteen letter in the alphabet is the O, so for Opal Street, so that's why they write it as you know O S L. You know, 15 or OST or OS, uh, either way, you know, because they have so many different ways of writing it, uh, but they're all right. You know, just depends how the person that's hitting it up, you know, and, you know, this is a neighborhood also that has so many neighbor, so many enemies around it because of them being on that list. You know, they got to deal with the Viennese, the A Streeters, the Wyfins, you know, Primera, Primera uh, Evergreen uh, and everybody else around them. You know what I mean? Uh, so it gets treacherous. And, and it doesn't help that their neighborhood is literally right there where V&E and A Street's at. You know, and Wyfins. Uh, so th there's no breathing room. They're literally just right there. Uh, but yet, Opal Street, you know, managed to hold their own. Uh, because there's this neighborhood um, had been around already since the late 70s, early 80s when this neighborhood was established. Uh, it started off as one of these, um, how can I say, it started off as one of these football teams. Uh, back then, the youths would create their own football teams, you know, and, and, and play against, you know, other areas and, and etc. So when the transition to, you know, gangbanging, you know, started and all of that, um, you know, they, they transitioned with it too, you know, making themselves a gang. But it wasn't until... Um, the whole uh, Southern politics started being enforced in in Los Angeles uh, that they just didn't want no part of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it is the reason why they ended up just being targeted. Uh, but yet, you know, they've remained themselves to be right there still, uh, continue to still represent theirs in Boyle Heights and putting theirs on the map. You know what I mean? For that Opal Street Locos. Like I said, they use the number 15 because the 15 letter on the alphabet is the O. So that is what it's for. Uh, but no, it's not his own mafia. So when they get incarcerated, they don't roll with like the homeboys. They don't program, you know, um, they do their, their own thing. Um, you know, kind of like similar, you know, situation with the uh, Lowell Streeters, obviously. Uh, you know, but hey, they still continue to have riders and, and still represent for theirs. You know what I mean? Uh, for that Opal Street. Now, to find the next neighborhood on the list, we would actually have to make our way down to the downtown Los Angeles portion area. Um, downtown Los Angeles is home to one of these neighborhoods that is non-Southern, you know, that are their own thing, that do their own thing, which is the Barrio Fifth and Hill. Barrio Fifth and Hill. Now, people uh, are not aware where Fifth and Hill is, and that's because um, they are thinking that it from the point that it's just one name, but it's actually two different names uh, because this neighborhood is located on Fifth and Hill. On Hill Street. So that's 5th Street and Hill Street. So that is the reason why it's known as 5th and Hill. Because that is where they started off. On 5th and Hill. Um, so it's not one you know, one name. One whole name. Uh, so that's the reason why people could never find that street. That's because uh, they're looking for the wrong street. Um, and their territory is everything that's right here on uh, Grand, um, Grand Avenue to 6th. So that's Grand Avenue and 6th. And then all the way to 4th. And then from 4th, I would have to say, um, still to Main Street. So everything that's in the middle is considered their barrio. So throughout 5th, throughout Spring Street, um, you know, that extends right there in, the, in you know, their neighborhood. Uh, throughout Broadway um, and, you know, throughout Hill and throughout Olive Street. Now, although it's not a big chunk of territory, nonetheless, it's still their turf. And even though there's like, you know, the Metro being right there and... Uh, the park and all of that, and there's not that much residence. Um, this neighborhood got to be a very, very large neighborhood. Um, and that's because they're not just located here, uh, here in, uh, in the west side of Los Angeles, but they're also located within the Watts area. Um, Watts is also home to the fifth, uh, fifth and Hill gang. Um, and obviously, you know, Watts being a very notorious area, you know, people already know about the Watts area. And this is also where you're able to find the 5th and Hill Watts uh, portion of their neighborhood. You know, close to the Watts Towers. You know, right there by, uh, you know, where the village boys are and, and, and the bloods and all of that. You know, it's the reason why there's, you know, a very, very strong rivalry uh, between these hoods. You know what I mean? Um, they definitely don't like each other. They definitely be cracking over there. Uh, and right there in Watts, they got to be a very, you know, large neighborhood as well. Um, 
and not just and not just here because although you know they don't program with us um the Varado fifth and hill does ha have an ally uh, especially when they're incarcerated they use the number 22 uh because they are known as border brothers uh paisas you know, Border Brothers being, you know, a prison street gang as well, uh, you know, that, you know, runs, you know, Paisa pretty much. And, you know, they're located, you know, spread out throughout all, all of California. Uh, and so the Fifth and Hill uh, aligns themselves with them. So that's the reason why they write, uh, you know, 22, you know, obviously for the double B's, uh, you know, Border Brothers, you know, showing their allegiance, you know, to, to their side. Uh so, you know, they could always call, you know, for, for reinforcements and, and et cetera and stuff like that. So they don't have it as bad as like, um, let's say Lowell or Opal that don't, that don't run with, with none of that. You know, at least these guys, you know, have the, you know, the border brothers, you know, cause fifth and Hill, you know, does, you know, run with them. And like I said, fifth and Hill, uh, fifth and Hill got to be a very large neighborhood. Um, I was told that at least the Fifth and Hill gang is more than 200 members. Uh, so they did get to be a large size, you know, when we're talking about members. Uh, but they do have a lot of enemies around them. I mean, you know, it's it, it'd be crazy, you know. This is another neighbor that claims, you know, tax-free and, and you know, F the suit and, and all of that. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, it still gets chaotic nonetheless. But they are still located right here in Los Angeles and in Watts. Uh, and they still, you know, hold it down for theirs in the Fifth and Hill gang right there. Thank you for watching MOD Entertainment. Make sure you like and subscribe.